All right, so I think today, at least in this video, I'm gonna try to wrap up the chapter on cargo because the next two sections are really, really tiny. We have installing binaries from crates.io with cargo install, and we have extending cargo with custom commands. So let's get to it. The cargo install command allows you to install and use binary crates locally. This isn't intended to replace system packages. It's meant to be a convenient way for Rust developers to install tools that others have shared on crates.io. Note that you can only install packages that have binary targets. A binary target is the runnable program that is created if the crate has a source slash main.rs file or another file specified as a binary as opposed to a library target that isn't runnable on its own but is suitable for including within other programs. Usually, crates have information in the readme file about whether a crate is a library, has a binary target, or both. All right, just a quick overview. What they're saying here is that there is a install command for cargo, and that allows you to install um, crates that have binaries associated with them. Like if a crate, when you build it, end or result in the creation of a binary, you could circumvent that process by using cargo install. I think it puts it in like your cargo slash bin, which if you have that in your path directory, then you could just use the command instantly right afterwards. But let's continue onward. And this is a really short file that I just scrolled all the way down. Yeah, it's quick. All binaries installed with cargo install are stored in the installation roots bin folder. If you installed Rust using rustup.rs, and don't have any custom configurations, this directory will be in the home slash dot cargo slash bin directory. Ensure that directory is in your path to be able to run programs you've installed with cargo install, which I just mentioned. I'm not sure if it's in the path for this computer, but on my other ones it is. For example, in chapter 12, we mentioned that there is a Rust implementation of the grep tool called ripgrep for searching files. If you want to install ripgrep, we can run the following. And let me pull out my trusty terminal. Clear, go to the root, and they want me to do cargo install ripgrep. And that seems to be running just fine. I don't know how long that's gonna take, but continue onward. The last line of the output shows the location and the name of the installed binary, which in the case of ripgrep is RG. As long as the installation directory in your is in your path, as mentioned previously, you can then run RG dash dash help and start using a faster, rustier tool for searching files. And as you can see on the right of my terminal, um, it's building all the dependencies in the packets. This kind of takes a while, um, especially if the computer's slow. I did this on a, oh, I have a Chromebook. A friend gave me their old Chromebook, which is on an Atom processor. And I have, I have a really hacky version of Linux installed on it. But when I do cargo install on that thing, it takes, it takes a while. And this one looks like it's gonna take a while as well. No, not too much longer. Anyway, I think ripgrep is done. They said I can use rp-help. That command is not found, which probably means I do not have cargo bin in my path. So let's cor correct that real quick. Uh, I did ls three times. I'm not exactly sure why. Nano dot fastrc. And it's page all the way down. I am I do see it in my path. It is right there. That is interesting. Uh they said it's going to be in the cargo dot bin file, alright? So let me just make sure it's here. I do see it. RP Oh, I keep RG. I feel silly. RG.help. I keep 
and that's our cube. So yeah, outside of the silliness that is me, you can see that it's here. Put that, make that small as you can see it. That's a lot of things in the help. This help is long, long. Oh. Just to get a glimpse of it. Hopefully it's, yeah, you can pipe it to less so you can read it. But yeah, that's all you have to do install things via uh, cargo install. Oh, I said we're gonna go over to the next section. That is right. So continuing onward in this very, very small section, extending cargo with custom commands. Cargo is designed so you can extend it with new subcommands without having to modify cargo. If a binary in your path is named something like cargo that something, you can run it as if it was a cargo subcommand by running cargo something. Custom commands like this are also listed when you run cargo dash dash list. Being able to use cargo install to install extensions and then run them just like the built-in cargo tools is a super convenient benefit of cargo's design. And I haven't done that explicitly at all. However, we did just see an example of what they were talking about when we were trying to debug the, the RPRG thing. So when I went to the cargo bin, right? In the cargo bin, you can see the other cargo files in there. And Clippy, Format, Generate, some of these other things, these are all using the same convention as this cargo something to make them into cargo subcommands. So if we do cargo list, they should be there. And we see Clippy, Format, Generate, and then the other things that were just listed there with some extra stuff too. That's interesting. Yeah. So that's their design at work in a real example. Continuing onward, the summary. Sharing code with Cargo and Crates.io is part of what makes the Rust ecosystem useful for many different tasks. Rust standard library is small and stable, but crates are easy to share, use, and improve on a timeline different from that of the language. Don't be shy about sharing code that's useful to you on Crates.io. It's likely that it will be useful to someone else as well. And with that, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it, hope it was entertaining, hope you learned something, I know I did. Outside of that, if you liked the video, subscribe. Peace.